Okay guys, so I want to talk to you about bike trends. And one of the biggest trends I saw emerging in 2023, and that's crank arm length. So it even got to me, I switched out my crank arm length to 170 as opposed to 175. And lots of people have switched even smaller because if they're short like me, 5'6", five, 5'7", five, they're being told that they should have 160 or even 155. And I, 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 I went down to 170 because I was already running 170 on my mountain bikes and I thought I would try it on my gravel bike seeing it's not gonna, five millimeters is not a huge difference. And it's, they say it's all about sizing, it's better on your body, it's more um, ergonomically designed for you. So let's talk about that for a second, okay? So first of all, if you can get your bike fit to you, that's important. I agree that your bike should be sized and fit to your dimensions. It doesn't mean you have to go all custom and get a custom frame built but you can do little things like your length of your stem the width of your handlebars the how much your handlebars drop how much your handlebars sweep back or sweep forward and how many spacers you have on your steer tube to raise your your overall stack height up you could do things like that. You could, you could do a setback saddle. You could push your seat rails forward and back. And so those things can be done as long as you get a frame that's pretty close to the right size of frame for you. You shouldn't, it's always better to size down because it's easier to make those adjustments to um, size up, I mean, with adjustments, if you will with a longer stem and a setback seat post and things like that but fitting aside so let's say you've got your bike fitted and that, obviously this is a custom bike that i have and it's been fitted for me and i've taken it on multiple multiple all day 100 mile rides and i was feeling fine at the end of the ride i even one time i came home and played tennis with my son I had so much energy after my 100 mile ride. So it, it didn't beat me up to the point where I was having neck pain, shoulder pain, back pain or anything like that. I was able to do that ride. And that was with my 175 millimeter cranks. But I decided to go 170 because I kind of gave into that trend of shorter crank arm length. Not to the extreme that some people are going with one 60 or 165 or even 150 155 i think that's what the that one chart um suggests with a guy that's making those uh really um short crank arms on on custom cranks so i don't agree with that and here's why okay number one you got to do you okay that's number one what feels right to you is not just about your body dimensions it's also about your your muscle memory your muscle condition your flexibility there's multiple factors that go in to what feels good for you okay that's part of it the other thing is when you go shorter crank arm length you are going less torque you have less leverage when you are pedaling and so therefore you are going pushing yourself a little bit less forward with each pedal stroke with those shorter crank arms and that may not make a big difference if you're riding just short distance like a mountain bike ride a typical mountain bike ride for most people is 10 to 20 miles um, so if you're riding just mountain bikes, it's not going to be that big of a difference because you're not doing a marathon ride. You're not doing this 
ultra distance ride on your mountain bike usually but on a gravel bike or a road bike most likely if you're riding those bikes and you're really into the sport you are doing longer distances so that translates to less forward momentum for those long distance and will it change your overall outcomes by going shorter crank arm do you feel that you are going to get benefited from it because you've always hated your long crank arms so i would ask yourself that are you having knee problems back problems neck problems and things that you think that are caused by your bike crank arm length being too big for your height and i didn't feel that way personally i didn't feel that way i'm short i've got a short 29 inch inseam but i've never felt that my crank arm lengths were causing any type of symptoms of being too big for me and there, part of the reason I did the 170 was well I just I wanted to change cranks and I wanted to go with white industry cranks and I wanted to go with that odd gear ratio uh, combination that I have with a 4830 so the the cranks I had before those Easton had a 50 and a 34 I think so that 34 was torturous going up some of my really really steep trails uh, when I rode my gravel bike up to Mount Wilson and up to Tahunga and all those really steep mountains up there they're very unforgiving and very steep so and I didn't I wanted something lower geared for that but I also wanted a bigger gear for these flat river path trail roads going down to the beach for my 100 mile rides so that was my reasoning to benefit me not just not by just having a little bit shorter crank arm but also by having something that's going the distance so what i'm saying is don't get into the hype you guys don't go out and buy a new crank set because somebody on YouTube tells you that, or some website tells you that you're only 5'6". You should be running 155 crank arms. Bullshit. You run what you think works for you and what you have experience with. And if it's going to be 155, so be it. And you, maybe you could go and, and you could reach out and try those. There's that one guy that gives you a a demo crank that you could put the pedal in different positions and try the different crank arm lengths if it's that important to you then go out and do that if you're trying to uh you know determine what's gonna make you a better rider and you think that changing it by 5 10 15 millimeters and shortening your crank arm length will make that huge of a difference but it, it you know fitting your bike perfectly to you is more than just your crank arm length there's multiple other factors like i said in the beginning and don't believe the hype and give into these trends i think we're getting suckered into these trends because you're influenced by people that are just trying to sell bike shit and i like buying bike parts and i don't mind supporting smaller companies selling bike parts but I don't want to support them on the premise that they say that my bike was not fitted to me properly and that I should change my, change my cranks, change my stem, change my handlebar, change all these things because these are better because that's what they, they feel with their PhD in biomechanics or something like that. I don't believe that shit. Are they actually the ones riding? you know 5,000 miles a year 4,000 miles a year 3,000 miles a year are they following athletes and are they trainers and maybe fitters for athletes that are putting in those miles and getting their feedback and let's face it we're not athletes <laughs> athletes are a different breed so we're 
we're regular people and we're just gonna pick what works for you and don't don't just buy something based on a trend and i'll leave it at that thanks for watching